Well, it's around five years ago since I last interviewed John Quay here at Banks Independent Carriers. And we put that video back up recently. Was, that was all about a new shipping we, company we potentially we coming did. and how you've been dealt with with the steam packet. So I thought, well, here we go, five years on. Now we've got the government owning the steam packet. This has got to have some sort of ramifications potentially for you. Uh, you know, yes or no. I mean, first of all, do, do you think it's yeah. a good idea that I, the I government buying it? Yes, definitely think it's a good idea because. Uh, we, we we hear all sorts of rumours about the vast profits that uh, that it makes between ten and seventeen million. Uh, if that's true, then instead of the money going off to Portugal or Australia or wherever these bankers are, then it's going to stay in the Isle of Man. That's got to be a good thing. Well, a pension thing wants it. it obviously got to be good news, isn't it? Because it's, it's guaranteed certain money, isn't it? There? That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, but how you treat it? I mean, you've always had that sort of love hate relationship, I mean, with it because you're what you you are. You not the biggest. Uh, one of one of the biggest anyway. Are um, people going to well, use it uh, as yeah, free? I think, uh, I think you've asked me that question before. Yeah. We're, we're biggest in terms of number of deliveries made, number of staff employed, number of vehicles employed. Uh, Tonnage-wise, perhaps we're not quite so big. No, but, but um, in the past we, they didn't, they didn't consult probably, much with you, did they? You know, you just got told in a letter, I think. <laughs> the, well, the, 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 it's going up. Do you think things will be better now? Um, well, I, I don't have too many problems with, with the steam packet and the management. I mean, uh, the service is great. The people we deal with in the freight office and, and the senior management, uh, we have a great relationship with them. Um, I, <laughs> my issue is with the owners who have extracted every last penny of profit um, from the business um, at the expense of the Isle of Man. Well, let's talk about Liverpool because there's this potential to you know, get freight in there, but in fact they're, they're limiting you, aren't they, on the potential, as I understand it, the actual proposals. Yeah. I mean, Can that, you take us through that? Uh, that's a bit sad, that, because the Isle of Man is spending uh, initially 30 million and it's going up and up. Um, and God knows what it will be when it's uh, finally finished. Uh, but the only proviso for freight is that we can ship uh, at weekends only, uh, which is what happens with the Birkenhead route, we can only ship on, on that on a Saturday and Sunday, a limited number of trailers. So um, I think it's about eight that, we're, that we've been told. Are you in competition with the Marxies and people like that as well for well, those we, slots? Well, we ship for Marks and Spencers, ah. as it happens, one of our clients, uh, but um, obviously our competitors ship for uh, the co-op and Tesco's and ShopRite. So You're competing for the slots then, aren't you? Yeah, it's limited. Basically, uh, the, the stuff that travels at the weekend is the food stuffs, the uh, short shelf life, dairy and fish products, that sort of thing. Uh, so it's not for general freight. Would you like to see that more? usable for freight 24 7 uh, well all year round whatever you want yeah to. it seems balmy that we're spending um millions and millions of pounds on a facility that will only be used for passengers and limited for freight because that means we've still got to go to two ports we're not getting the efficiencies of going to one port with one set of um, uh, stevedores and checking in staff we've got to have two because we've got them one at hesham and one at liverpool um and spending all that money and would, would you like to see liverpool as the the container uh, area and the passenger area and everything. The li Liverpool, from, from our depot, um, the new link span in Liverpool will be 14 miles. The um, distance from our depot to Hesham is 52 miles. Right. Uh, Hesham has one motorway, the M6. Uh, Liverpool has several motorways, the 56, the 62 and the 58, as well as the East Lanks and uh, Runcorn Bridge, Speak etc etc so it's easier to get into Liverpool if there's problems on the motorway. Um, they, are, they are saying you can use it in emergencies or something so potentially. Yes yeah, so if there's a problem at Hesham and that there are problems at Hesham now and again when they get um, uh, low water and uh, low tides um, because the, it hasn't been dredged perhaps as often as it should have been um, so we'll find that the Ben McCree can't get in on its scheduled times um, it might have to wait two or three hours for the tide to change uh, but generally speaking, we, we've never, touch wood, had a delay at Hesham that's been caused by issues in the port. Um, well, I'm trying to get a head around is who's blocking it being used more? Is it the, they don't, the residents don't want to see freight there, or is it the uh, holdings, well, think, or is it I just think the there's, there's city there's council? Two issues. Um, I think Liverpool uh, City Council um, want the docks area to be um, predominantly leisure and residential. Uh, and the last thing you want is um, freight there uh, with the noise it makes, um, reverse and bleepers and engines rev and that sort of thing. Um, I, I, th I think that's one of the reasons. And of course, the other problem is that Peel Ports 
have monopoly on the whole area. They own both sides of the river, as well as on Hesham. So um, you've got to do what they say, haven't you? Right, because the, the actual freight terminal is a lot further down still, yeah, isn't Seaforth it? Yeah, Seaforth is, uh, yeah. is way down the river, and, and, and the problem would be then uh, bringing passengers into a commercial yeah. um, uh, cargo port. So, so to sum it all up, as it stands, I mean, we're not there yet. Do you think the whole thing with Liverpool is a good idea, what they're, they're proposing? <laughs> I, I just lament the, the, the money that's going to be spent for a facility that's going to be limited in its use. Um, it's, it's not very satisfactory. Um, we're still going to be running two vessels, one to Hesham and one to Liverpool, when if, if everything was coming out of Liverpool, you could get away with running one vessel. It, running one vessel means that you can lower the costs. If you're running two vessels and they're both only half loaded, both half full, then you, all you're doing is putting your costs up. If we could run, especially these shoulder periods now, like, like where we are now, we still have the, the Ben McCree doing two round trips to Hesham every day, and we've got the Mananan doing a trip to Liverpool um, afternoons, I think, at the moment. Uh, and both vessels are partly loaded. Um, why not just have one doing the, 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 the one trip? Um, it's, it's not economic. Okay, just to finish with uh, the post office having hard times, no one's sending letters, but everyone's sending parcels. I bet you, over the years, you must have seen a fantastic increase, haven't you, in, in people buying yeah, online yeah. and things? Uh, I, I, was, I was a bit peeved when I heard the chairwoman of the post office say that the, um, the freight carriers were taking business away from the post office. The parcels business that I have here, I've dealt with a lot of these customers for more than 20 years. We haven't took anything away from the post office. That business has grown with us and we've, we've been part of the growth. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we're a commercial operation. We're dealing with commercial companies. We're very efficient in what we do. Um, and the post office have, have to compete with us on that basis. And I don't believe the post office is particularly efficient. It's probably overmanaged and um, Spanish practices and God knows what funny hours. Um, it's never going to be as efficient as we are. And has business gone like that? I mean, parcels? Um, yes, the parcel traffic, I, I couldn't give you a percentage, no, but, but um, uh, you must it's, see it's how definitely, how many definitely grown. Uh, the amount of uh, freight that we, uh, that we now carry online um, is significantly more than it was 10 years ago. Um, but they, they do tell me that uh, in the past, the, the catalogue business, the Ks and Marshalls and you going back a bit? All that, <laughs> I forgot about that. That, 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 was, that was that was the, that was yeah. substantial. Yeah. Um, and w one of the one of the businesses that we have is is is, is a freight company that came out of the the catalogue business, the the J John Moores and, and that of this world, um, and uh, it, it still carries that type of goods, but now it's ordered online rather than um, via and, a catalogue. And when a punter like me sees something on, and it says exclude Isle of Man or an extra ten pounds, is that is that always going to be the case? Uh, it's, it still happens, um, but we, we have a solution to that. It's a, a business, a web-based business that we set up called Ship to Man. Uh, and basically, it takes advantage of uh, free shipping within uh, the UK, which, as you know, we're not part of. So um, people can use that uh, free shipping to our depot in the UK, and then we, we pick it up from there and bring it through to the Isle of Man. Uh, at a very economic charge, um, so that fulfills that need. That's that's a way around it. Yeah, yeah. When a lot of your people you negotiate with, you, you try and get that sort of inclusivity that, you, that includes the Isle of Man as part of their. Yes, yes. I mean, if I'm buying online myself, uh, I always try and find something that that doesn't say excluding yeah. highlands and islands okay. because that's that's the term they to use. To finish with, how are we going to be? Do you think uh, in uh, you know five years' time, the Isle of Man? Uh, I think we need to make sure that government, and, and to be fair, they are um, conversing with us and uh, consulting ab about the user agreement. We need to get new the ships. new user agreement sorted. New ships. Uh, I think there will be new ships. But um, there'll be things you want, presumably, hopefully. Uh, well, we'd like to see, uh, for freight, we'd like to see two Ben McCree style vessels. Uh, I don't think, we need to, don't think we need a sea cap because it doesn't carry freight. Um, so two sea cap vessels. Uh, um, two, two conventional vessels, yeah, Benz. Um, like the Ben, and then you've got seamless transition when one goes for a refit or has a breakdown, you've got an identical vessel can step in with the same capacity, can meet the same schedules and that sort of thing. We'll talk in less than five years next time. Yes, indeed. <laughs>